especially if you're new to this hobby. There are countless options out there to choose from, and this can be a bit intimidating sometimes. So eyepiece manufacturers came up with an eyepiece design that would make this decision a lot easier. I'm talking about zoom eyepieces. In today's video, we are going to take a look at the Hyperion Universal Zoom eyepiece Mark IV from Barter Planetarium. So let's find out if and when an eyepiece with a zoom function actually makes sense to get. Welcome to BD Observatory. If you're new to my channel, I like to talk about astronomy equipment. So if you're looking for this type of information, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. If you already know my videos and like them, but haven't subscribed yet, then maybe consider doing so, so you don't miss out on new content. What's special about Zoom eyepieces is that they offer multiple focal lengths in a single package. So in theory, you could have just one eyepiece that has decent optics and offers a wide range of focal lengths, giving you great views of the night sky whilst allowing for maximum flexibility in your choices. With a zoom eyepiece, you could theoretically always choose the right focal length in order to maximize the viewing experience at any point during your observations. So this is obviously a great thought. So why don't we all use zoom eyepieces then? Well, it's not as simple. Even though they have some major pros, they also have some drawbacks. First, the apparent field of view of these type of eyepieces is relatively small, especially at medium focal lengths. And second, they employ a somewhat complex design with a high number of lenses. And typically this results in a narrower and not so bright image that you can see with your eye. There are a few eyepiece manufacturers out there that have tried to come up with the perfect zoom eyepiece design over the years. Some of them were more successful than the others, but in the, in the recent time, there is an eyepiece design that made a name for itself, namely the Universal Zoom Mark IV from Bader Planetarium. This German company was founded in 1966 by Klaus Bader and started out by producing observatories for schools and universities. Later, they started producing quality eyepieces and telescope accessories. One of their more popular lineups in terms of eyepieces is the Hyperion series. It includes eyepieces with focal lengths starting from 5 mm and all the way up to 36 mm for the aspherical 2 inch design. They all come with a 68 degrees apparent field of view, a generous 20 mm of eye relief and 8 fully coated lenses grouped into 5 elements. Completing the lineup is also a zoom eyepiece, the Hyperion Universal Zoom Mark IV. This fourth generation comes with a variable focal length starting from 8 mm and all the way up to 24 mm. A very nice and smooth click-stop mechanism allows for fine adjustment of the focal length. The apparent field of view varies with the focal length in such a way that it starts with 68 degrees at the shortest focal length of 8 mm and then gets narrower as you increase the focal length, ending up at 48 degrees at 24 mm focal length. The Astroshop's website states that the eye relief of this eyepiece is fixed at 16 mm, but I found that it's not true. Testing this eyepiece, I noticed that the eye relief gets shorter as the focal length increases. On its lowest setting of 8 mm focal length, the eye relief is somewhere around 19 mm, and from here it gets shorter all the way down to approximately 16 mm. This is a bit short if you're wearing glasses as myself. Construction-wise, the build quality is solid. 
and a bit lighter than expected, with the housing being made completely out of aluminum. Inside there are seven fully coated lenses grouped into four elements. The anti-reflection coating used is called Phantom Coating and is a special coating developed by Baller for its optical systems. The main characteristic is that it's almost colorless to the naked eye, which means that it's working across the entire visible spectrum, allowing for good contrast. The Hyperion Zoom eyepiece comes with a ton of accessories and features that makes it a very versatile eyepiece. Starting with three rubber eye cups, one of which is adjustable with a nice twist-in system, a nose piece with two adapters for normal telescopes and spotting scopes, a 2-inch adapter for a 2-inch focuser and an M43 thread at the other end for connecting it to your camera. It also comes with a nice soft pouch for protection. Now all this sounds great, but what is the actual viewing experience with this eyepiece? Well, it's sort of a mixed bag. Being able to zoom in and out without needing to change the eyepiece is awesome. The click-stop mechanism I mentioned earlier is very satisfying and easy to use. The views were always sharp and with good contrast regardless of the focal length with almost no aberrations and no internal reflections. Only set at 24mm focal length, I was able to notice some chromatic aberrations right at the edge of the field of view, but this wasn't bad by any means. The brightness, however, isn't that good. I've set the Hyperion to 8mm focal length and then compared it to the 9mm D-Light from Teleview. Then I set the Hyperion to 24mm focal length and compared it to the 24mm Panoptic also from Teleview. And in both cases the views through the Hyperion were dimmer than the views through the two Teleview eyepieces. I also had problems achieving focus with my 12-inch ProDub and the Hyperion set to 24mm focal length and using the one and a quarter inch nose piece. As soon as I switched to the 2-inch nose piece, I had no problems achieving focus. I also did not enjoy the fact that at its longest focal length setting, where due to the low magnification you would want to see the most amount of sky, the Hyperion only offers you 48 degrees apparent field of view. But this is a technical limitation and I believe we need to take it as it is. There is, however, a use case where this is a good thing. The narrower field of view leads to a narrower field stop and this combined with a zoom capability actually makes this eyepiece very well suited for binary viewing. For example, the Hyperion works great with the excellent Mark V wide field bino viewer from Bader. If you want to get into bino viewing, then getting two of these zoom eyepieces is definitely a good idea. In order to give you guys a better understanding of what the views through this eyepiece actually look like, I've set up some examples using Stellarium. I'll also leave a link to Stellarium and where you can download it for free in the description below. Please keep in mind that these are simulated views and not actual views of the night sky. With quality optics and the great flexibility that only zoom eyepieces have, the Hyperion Zoom Mark IV from Baller Planetarium is an excellent choice for anyone who's just starting with this hobby. It's very easy to use and thanks to all the accessories it comes with, it will likely be compatible with your setup. So if you're ready to trade a bit of brightness and apparent field of view, for more flexibility and compatibility, then the Hyperion Zoom eyepiece from Baller might be the right eyepiece for you. However, if you already own some decent dedicated eyepieces for different focal lengths, then I wouldn't necessarily get the Hyperion Zoom eyepiece. I would upgrade the existing eyepieces one by one instead. So what do you think about Zoom eyepieces in general? Would you get one? 
let me know in the comments below. All right, that's been it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and also subscribe to my channel. If you have questions or feedback, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and catch you guys next time.